Hello everyone and welcome to Windows Forensics here at Pentester Academy. In this video we're going to start collecting some volatile data. In a few previous videos we showed you how you could use some basic scripts in order to automate the process of using Netcat to gather information. And now we're going to start putting that into practice. So we're still here in our first box. We're doing a little bit of limited live analysis which will then proceed into a full live analysis and possibly further on our system. So what data should we collect? The first thing we want to collect is the date and time. Now why do we want to collect this? We want to collect this because the clock can easily get skewed as you likely know if you have a computer that is not connected to a time server its system clock will quickly drift off of time. Also, there might be a different time zone. Perhaps the time zone is set incorrectly for the particular subject system, or it's in a different time zone from your forensics workstation, and you want to be sure that you know what time things occurred when you start building timelines, etc. You also want to look at some network interfaces. Are there any funny networks? Is there any network interface that's in promiscuous mode? What sort of connections are there? Are there open ports? What programs are there associated with various ports? Who's logged in? What processes are running? What services are running? What files are open? What is in the routing tables? Is there something strange in there? What are the mounted file systems? Are there any funny network shares or other file systems that you don't recognize? Are there any scheduled jobs? Is there some piece of malware that's running periodically? You can look at process memory dumps and that will give you some more information. What's in the clipboard? What drivers are installed on this machine? What are those network file and print shares? And what is the command history? What sort of commands have users been running on this box? So these are some of the basic things that you might want to look at. So without further ado, let's get on to collecting data. So here I have my subject system, which is a Windows 7 box. And I'm going to go ahead and open a command prompt, go to my response drive, and I will run my setup client command. And now I will go to my Linux machine. On my Linux machine, I will make sure that I'm running my listeners. And in this case, they're already started. I'm going to go ahead and close my case. And I'll start a new one just to remind you of how this works. So now I have a new case that's been opened. If I go back to my Windows system, I can start collecting information. So I will start by logging my date and time like so. In case you're wondering, the slash T option for date and time just tells me the date and time without asking me to reset it. Next, I will get some network connection information using netstat-an. If I do a netstat-h, I will get some information. And notice that dash A displays all connections and dash N displays addresses and port numbers in numerical form. So I will use send log and that's done. We can also use some other flags for netstat. So we might want to try something like this. While we're using netstat, we might want to use the dash R option to show a routing table. Let's go ahead and pass this over to our forensics workstation. Now, Let's have a look at what showed up so far on the Forensics Workstation. So here we can see where I sent the date command and I got my response. I got the time and then I look at active connections. So here we can see the local addresses that are listening and notice I see something kind of peculiar. There is an established connection from my local machine on address 101 to a machine at address 1 on port 8080. Now these particular entries are not unusual. These are all related to my using the send log 
system that I set up. And here we also see a couple of established connections. Here I can see my list of interfaces. Here's my routing table. I can see my gateway. This is my gateway out to the internet because this is a virtual machine. And here are my IP6 routes. So, so far, other than this one connection, nothing terribly unusual or possibly unusual seems to be going on so far. We will do some more live analysis in future videos, but that's all for this video. As always, if you're enjoying these videos here at Pentester Academy, please tell a friend. We'll see you soon.